Live from San Francisco, California, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 2015. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media, with special thanks to Docker. Now your hosts, Stu Miniman and Jeff Frick. Hi, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are live on the ground in San Francisco at DockerCon 2015. 2,000 amped up people running around, grabbing t-shirts, they're excited. A lot of buzz in the hallways. We're really excited to be here. First time we brought theCUBE here. Joined by my co-host, Stu Miniman. Stu, welcome again. Thanks, and uh, we're really excited for this next segment that Ben Gala, the CEO of uh, Docker, kind of running this crazy thing. So first off, Ben, welcome. It's been well, thank you so much. You. It's been great. It's great to be here. So what's this, what's the show look like from uh, up on stage in the keynote from your point of view? <laughs> up on the keynote, it's <laughs> terrifying. But I mean, uh, you know, I mean, look, for all intents and purposes, we're a two-year-old company, and, and to be able to have uh, a situation where we've got people from all over the world and every major company here, not just to learn about Docker, but you know, people like GE and the GSA and Disney and Activision talking about using Docker in production, is, it's, it's a thrill beyond, beyond, beyond explanation. Yeah. Amazing. All right, so, so Ben, can yeah. you lay out for us just you know, the, the, the company over the last year? I, I think uh, one of my tweets uh, that I love from last year was there were 42 people working for Docker last yeah. year, and they might not have the answer to life, the universe, and everything, but boy, th this is a hot new thing. You know, fast forward a year, it's 150 people, yeah, but yeah. You know, order magnitude more committers. Right. Uh, so you know, where are kind of the, the company, the project, the ecosystem? Lay out yeah, well, I mean, as, the as you noticed, you know, the, yeah. the company has sort of not, not quite quadrupled, which is big. But if you look at some of the other statistics, like the number of Dockerized applications that are out there, there were like 15,000 of them last DockerCon, now it's 150,000. If you look at how often those were downloaded, they've been downloaded three million times at the last DockerCon in June. Uh, in January, that was 100 million, now it's 500 million. So to a large extent, what <laughs> you know, life at Docker has been is just trying to keep up with this amazing ecosystem and, and all of the activity, and it's not just Web companies using Docker now, but we're seeing it being used by some of the most serious enterprises on the planet. Yeah, so uh, I, I was telling you, I just finished reading a book uh, by Jim Whitehurst, and mm -hmm. he talked about, you know, open source is tough because you're yeah. not like just telling your employees to go do something. You're trying to, you know, incent and engage an entire community to help them build and, you right. know, build off of that network effect. Right. So Docker, of course, being open source, you know, talk yeah. a little bit about that, you know, your role in this big ecosystem versus some, some of your previous leadership right. roles. Well, I mean, I mean certainly there, there are tough things about, about, about open source, and you yeah. sort of have to accept the fact that you're, you're not in control. I mean, so I think, you know, be, being a parent, that's really good training for this because you have to realize <laughs> that at some point, you know, this, this is going to develop in ways that you don't expect and that's wonderful. But, you know, Docker couldn't exist as a proprietary company. And if you think about the kind of leverage that we get, you know, 1,300 people working on the code of whom we pay the salaries of 70, right? The fact that there are every major operating system, every major cloud provider, every major DevOps tool, um, every, every major ops platform, latching onto Docker, right? That only happens if you're open source. And, and now that we're moving into commercial, you know, there's no way that we could play golf with the CIOs of every, uh, you know, every Fortune 500. And in fact, I, you know, I only play golf on courses with windmills. But with Docker, we don't play golf with them, but we know that every one of those companies has a Docker project going on. You know, that was one of the stats we showed, right? Is, is that, you know, uh, the latest stats are something like 10% of all Fortune 500 CIOs say that they've got Docker, you know, in pilot or in production, another 30% plan to do it by the end of the year. So. That only happens if you're open. Yeah, so Ben, the first time you, yeah. you and I sat down to talk about Docker, you, your, your elevator pitch was, we're going to separate my application management right. from my infrastructure management. Heard a lot in this uh, the, the keynote this morning about you know the great stuff you're doing around networking and all the plugins. Right. Talked about how you fit into various clouds, uh, right. but there, there's that plumbing that needs to work. Sure. So, you know, is it as simple as just saying, hey, you know, we can just focus on applications now, or you right. know, there's a lot of hard work to be done. I think. Well, I, I think what we're yeah. sort of going is we're going from sort of physical defined infrastructure, yeah. and we sort of have this this realm of software defined infrastructure. Now it's really application defined infrastructure. So if you will, the you know people are building generic infrastructure. And then the applications, in particular the containers, are saying, hey, here's what I need in terms of security, in terms of networking, in terms of storage. And then it's up to the infrastructure to either say, yeah, I can deliver it or not. So you have separated them, but you've separated them in a, in a really interesting way. Right? It's not that people who write applications don't have to worry about storage or networking. It's that they don't have to worry that the infrastructure they're running on has been configured to support them. 
So you see just more and more yeah. of that infrastructure set up moving into the container and less and less and less in the app and then some, the definition right. really will define and really have a smarter container that goes out and assembles the correct infrastructure yeah. underneath the covers. That, that's right, that's right. In, in essence, I mean, you know, go back to this shipping container analogy, right? You, know, you have a little label on the shipping container that says what's inside of it and where it needs to go. And to some extent, that lets everybody who's running the ships and the trains and the trucks and the cranes, that gives them all the information that they need, right. need to work. Um, and in the case of Docker containers, uh, or sort of Docker-based Docker, Docker -based applications, you're actually stitching together multiple different containers, but the outside of that container, if you will, tells you security profile, it tells you who created it, it tells you what's in it, it tells you what it needs to run, and then to some extent you either say, yep, as infrastructure I can take that or I can't, which is a sort of much, much better way of doing things. And it's sort of the same philosophy as the big data guys, right? Rather than having to precisely define what questions you want to ask in advance of your data, right. set up your data so people can ask any questions. So, can you talk a little about the Open Container Project? So, right, right. you know, we, we know when you've got that many big name logos on there, there's got to be a lot of behind the scenes, moving, shuffling, you guys brought in the Linux Foundation. So, you know, yeah. give us a little bit of insight as to, you know, what led to this. You know, <laughs> sure. you said the flash bulbs all went up, uh, went off yeah, yeah. when, uh, you know, Solomon shook hands with Alex Polvey of, uh, of CoreOS <laughs> yeah. uh, during yeah. the keynote. So, yeah. you know, you know, has the, I think Adrian said even that we might have you know smoothed over that bump that we had six months right, right, ago. Right. So give us some insight. Right. Well, I mean, we actually you know, um, probably by the time at Docker was like nine months old, people were already saying to us, "Hey, listen, this is fantastic, um, but the container itself has to be more than just Docker, right? It's, it's got to be something that is that is universal." And you know, to sort of use another infrastructure analogy, you know, really shouldn't be arguing about the width of train tracks anymore. We should just be out there all you know building the faster engines, and so. You know, this is something that's been building up over the past several years, but really in the, about, a, about three, three weeks ago, you know, we were talking to the folks at Red Hat and the folks at Microsoft and IBM and saying, hey, let, let's not spend our time arguing about, uh, about the shape of the box anymore. Let, let, let's worry about uh, making things great. And so uh, this steamroll started. We knew we wanted to do something lightweight and that's where we brought the Linux Foundation in. And then pretty quickly we had, you know, everybody from A to V, from you know, Amazon up to, to VMware wanting to join. And then we said, well, let's really go for broke. Let's see if we can make this work with CoreOS and the AppSea guys as well. And spoke to them, and it was just so gratifying that they wanted to, they sort of wanted to make this uh, an industry-wide effort as well. So, you know, I won't say it was entirely smooth. You don't get yeah. 20 big companies to agree on something without a few. Uh, and, and did you say that was three weeks ago is when this really started? Uh, three weeks before? ago, yeah. You know, we thought, wow. well, you know, putting on DockerCon is easy. It's not like we have all these demos or things like that. Let's, let's throw one more. <laughs> one more uh, thing onto the onto the file. So. Wow! So you know, one of the things we're we're all just majorly impressed. You you, yeah. did, you showed showed some of those stats of you know how many applications and how many downloads and how many yeah, committers right, right. you have there. I mean, things are moving so fast. Yes. You know, how do you make sure you don't you know run off the tracks when you go around a curve if you use your train analogy? <laughs> okay. You know? Yeah. Uh, you know, it it is really hard, but I think that there are certain guiding principles that that keep us sort of grounded. First of all, when you have you know, 1,300 contributors, they keep you grounded. They, they tell you when they don't like what you're doing, right? Um, uh, they're, 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 they're very free with their contribution as well as their uh, suggestions, their creative suggestions for improvement. Um, I think we also know that being open in general is fantastic. We always say, let's start with uh, putting the hooks and holes, if you will, in place. You know, building the tools first and then building solutions on top of that. Uh, and we listen to our users, and the users keep us, keep us honest. And, you know, now that we have banks and people trying to do healthcare and people you know trying to provide national defense you know we have even more controls than than ever sort of making sure that we pay attention to security and reliability and, and quality All so right. clearly you guys are on yeah. a on a great virtuous cycle and and it's funny we're going back to the the container the container yeah, behind yeah, us yeah, and yeah. if you've ever read the book the box yeah, which is yeah. a great book about great book. containers it wasn't that easy even in that industry to really get a standardized no. shipping container what was the moment? What was the secret sauce? Because as, as we've talked earlier on theCUBE, containers have been around for a while. They were right. a much uh, lower level, sure. kind of more techie thing. What was it that kind of was the tipping point for Docker? Well, you know, when, when Docker came out, I think, I think the difference was that before Docker, containers were kind of the equivalent of a steel box. You know, they didn't have hooks and holes on them. They weren't all the same size and shape. Um, and they weren't designed for developers. They were just an infrastructure tool. And so I think Solomon's insight was, let's try and make this a standard, let's make it as open as possible so that anybody can design it, and then let's get it in the hands of developers first. And once developers started using it, things started taking off, and 
suddenly it made sense for Red Hat and Microsoft and IBM and Intel and all of these guys to, to embrace Docker and all the startups. Uh, and you know, it was probably nine months after we started the project that suddenly you could take any application written in Linux, put it in a Docker container and run it anywhere. And that sort of showed the world what we could be. And so now, now there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be worked out. Right. But I right. think the industry has decided this is the right way to go. It, all right. So, Ben, we've talked a lot about the ecosystem and where yeah. the company is. Talk about how, how's Docker kind of bundling, you know, making a solution that you know go to market and you know sure. maybe talk about revenue a little bit. <laughs> you know, I meet with my investors. No, yeah. no, no, no. no. I, actually, um, uh, we're really excited by the things that we're seeing on on the uh, on the revenue side as well. So. Uh, at the last DockerCon, we announced a bunch of hosted services, um, and pretty much what we're seeing, uh, and this DockerCon, we're announcing a lot of, or shipping a lot of on-premise services, and this nice virtuous cycle that we're seeing is that, of course, developers adopt Docker, uh, open source, they start using it, they bring it into their companies, it goes from an individual developer creating five containers on, you know, on five servers to a work group, and at that point, they tend to jump onto our hosted services, and we've, you know, we've got, uh, over uh, 250,000 individuals uh, for paying for the hosted service as well as something like 15,000 organizations uh, on the hosted services. And when we announced our on-promise solutions, uh, we had in the first day 100 organizations say, hey, we want to be on the list for that. Uh, we ended up doing a beta with about 50, including half of whom are you know, sort of Fortune 500 types. And now we've got 800 companies waiting basically for the announcement we are we're making tomorrow about it all being generally available. So, great companies, and a lot of them are talking, commercial paying customers talking today at DockerCon. Yeah, um, give us your take. You know, you've got to be pulled in a million different directions these mm -hmm. days. Every every show we've been at <laughs> the last year talks about, you know, Docker. Right. So, I was even at, you know, the IBM Edge, which was their storage and mainframe show, sure. and we talked about Docker on ZOS, you know, there. So, you yeah. know, Walmart uh, talking about how they, 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 right, they, right. they, they want to use containers in a mainframe environment. Right. So across the board, you know, from the infrastructure side, from the cloud side, and talk about development and the applications. I mean, you guys are in the center of that. So, yeah. you know, you, you talked a little bit about guiding principles before, but, sure. you know, boy, how, how does the team, you know, how do you scale the team? You know, how do you think about where you do your hires and, right. you know, where, 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 where do you go? Uh, so, I mean, it, it obviously is a challenge, right? There are, there's a lot of, a lot of pressures. You know, again, part of the, part of the benefit of being open is that there are certain things like really deep storage problems and really deep networking problems that we don't have to solve. Right. We can develop high level APIs and then partner with a, you know, a Cisco or a VMware or an EMC, uh, as well as startups uh, like Rancher and Cluster HQ. And so what we're able to do is get that full stack that the enterprise wants. The enterprises are all coming to Docker right now saying, hey, help us put it all together. And so we're sort of in this env enviable position where we can you know, be the people who stitch together the whole solution, but we don't have to build every part of it. And that's, and that's helping keep us sane. So you talked about, uh, it's kind of like managing your kids, at some point they, yeah. uh, they go off and are, are their own people. Right. What if you could share some of the things that have surprised you, that you had no kind of thought that you know, somebody would take this project in a particular direction, a particular type of use? Now that, that's a great question, because it, it happens all the time. Um, I mean, so for example, you know, Docker has been focusing on 64-bit Linux um, but if you walk around the show today, you'll see people doing Docker on Raspberry Pi and Docker on mobile and Docker on Power and Z systems and of course, you know, Docker on Windows. Microsoft came to us for a first meeting and we thought, hey, well, let's, let's talk about uh, you know, making Docker for Linux work with Azure. And they said, oh, no, 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 we've got something else. We want to actually want to make Docker for Windows. Right? And so that's been really surprising. And then the use cases that you see with Docker are just, it's thrilling. And whether it's people working on genomic stuff or building new businesses. I mentioned this company, Nerdalize, that has, Nerdalizer, that is basically running an out, they're, they're running a cloud, but the cloud basically has equipment in 2,000 Dutch apartments, and they've got servers there where the connectivity <laughs> is through the power grid, uh, and the server is designed to run hot because it serves as a radiator as well as a server. Yeah, you know, crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, we and, they, and, they, and even they we, want Docker for and, that. And they're using Docker <laughs> to make that happen, right? I mean. I tell you, I would not have thought of that, but um, very cool stuff. Yeah, so there's so much going on at the show, Ben. For, for those yeah. that couldn't make it to the show, because there was a huge wait list for that. Yeah, <laughs> for, for the yeah, show. yeah, more, more people so on the wait list than were at the show last you know, week. Uh, last, last there, there's got to be so many things you're proud of, but give us a couple of nuggets that might be overlooked or you know that people should make sure to poke into. Yeah, uh, well, so first of all, you know, first for this show is we've got a big cultural section. So we've got you know what it's like to develop an open source, uh, 
you know, if, if you're part of a community that isn't particularly well represented here, I think we're really proud of that. Um, there's a lot of stuff here that's for the contributors and making it easy for people to contribute, and that's been a big part of our focus as well. Um, and I think that if you're into storage or you're into networking, you're into seeing live migration work, you're into seeing um, how you can actually sign and secure containers, there's a lot of great stuff for you. But, but honestly, for me, my favorite thing is just going to the use cases because at the end of the day, there's nothing that, that sort of shows the power of Docker more than users who are using Docker. And you know, one of the other great stats we have at this conference is uh, we had over, I think, 400 talks submitted, so we ended up accepting something like 7% of them. We felt like an Ivy League university. 7%? Uh, 7% of the talks, um, but all fantastic. And, uh, and, and they're all uh, going to be made available online. Everything's being videotaped, and so you'll get great quality if you can't go to a particular session. Yeah, that, that, that's awesome. I mean, do you vis envision this as the container show for the industry, or you know, how, how, how much is it the you know Docker project? How much is it containers, <laughs> and how much is it you know Docker the company? You know, I, I always say you know Docker the company is just a tiny piece of Docker the project, and Docker the project is really a tiny piece of Docker the ecosystem, and Docker the ecosystem really is a tiny piece of this big movement around containerization. And so I hope that this show. And everything we do really is in, in service of the, of the broader movement. Well, Ben, that's a great way to close out the segment. Thanks okay. for taking a few minutes out of what I'm sure is a very busy couple of days, but a few more to go, and then you can take a break, and hopefully the team will get a little... Yeah, uh, now if, you, if you try and interview me next week, I'll be that little greasy puddle <laughs> a little sitting puddle. in the... Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, does Let's everybody see. get Friday off? You know? <laughs> that's right. Well, no, we're going to give them Saturday off. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, and back that, that's a Sunday. nice change. So. Right. Yeah, you know. <laughs> there we go. Well, Ben Golub, uh, CEO of, of Docker, here at DockerCon 2015. I'm Jeff Frick. Joined by my co host Stu Miniman. We're the Cube. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. The center of the universe today is right here in San Francisco under your Buena Gardens. I'm Jeff Frick. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with the next guest after this short break.